So I was just able to do something on a laser I've never done before, and that is cut through three quarter inch walnut, and the cut was actually pretty usable. And it was all thanks to this machine right here, the Creality Falcon 2 Pro, which I've done a video on, but now they have a 60 watt module, and that isn't the only cool thing about it. All right, let's jump into the video. So this video is sponsored by Creality. This is not a product review. And even with that, I'm not going to tell you something that I haven't actually tested myself. And from what I've actually tested, uh, it's, uh, it's pretty cool. If this is the first time you've seen this machine, um, it's probably not the first time that you have seen Creality. Uh, they are big in the 3D printing space. Now on the laser side of things, Creality kind of entered the picture with their own machine. I reviewed the Creality Falcon 2, um, which was basically this machine, but like if you took the top off, it was completely open air. And at the time it was a great machine because of the overall build quality. It was well thought out. It worked well. You could tell Creality had been building machines like this over the years. But the biggest limitation was that there was no top to it. So you were exposed directly to the diode light, which unlike a bigger CO2 laser is not great for your eyes. You're exposed to the dust and the fumes. There was no way to really do exhaust unless you built your own custom enclosure or you bought something from them. But then fast forward to earlier this year, actually in February, they came out with the Falcon 2 Pro, um, which is this unit. And then that brings us to today, which is June 2024, where they have come out with a 60 watt module that I have on the machine right there. But that isn't the only cool thing about it. Now, before we talk about that module and how powerful it is and the cool stuff that you can make. Let's talk about the machine itself. Now I have done a full walkthrough of this machine because it is the same thing that you saw before and that video is right there. But as a quick overview, what I really like about it is the entire frame is well built and really sturdy. Um, this is metal. And then all of like the mechanical components and the tracks are built directly into the frame. Uh, that's unlike some other manufacturers that might take an open gantry style machine and just drop an enclosure on top of it. They didn't do that so they built up the frame and everything is rock solid. Inside you have a nice bed, but instead of going the honeycomb route, they went with these guys like little blades. Uh, this is something you might see more with bigger CO2 machines. Uh, and these are obviously removable, um, but there are fixed spots on the side of the machine itself. And there's actually a ton of these that you can drop in. And there's two things I love about that. First is just that it's really easy to move those around to get them exactly where you want. Uh, but you can also completely remove them and you can put thicker material in there because you do have a good base underneath. So that's really great to be able to get thick stuff in there. Now, obviously the, uh, probably the most, uh, noticeable feature is this enclosure on top. Um, so what I love about this is the fact that it obviously slides so it's easy to use, but it doesn't fully open up like a big door like you're gonna find with lids on other machines, meaning that the space you need above the machine is how high the machine actually is. So this is gonna fit in places that you might not be able to fit other desktop diode machines. Another thing with the cover is the fact that it is fully 360, meaning you can see from any side of the machine the stuff that you're working on. And there's a few examples of me actually recording from behind the machine because you get a little bit better shot of the laser beam itself. And then last on the overall design is this tray right here. Uh, this is fully removable, so it makes it really easy to get all of the crumbs and the debris and stuff from your cuts and clear everything out. Now it does have an air assist. Uh, so it is a separate compressor right here that lives next to the machine. Uh, but, and then you have a dial right here where you can change the amount of pressure that, that is coming through. So depending on the type of cut that you're doing, you might want more or less air. And especially if you're doing engraving, you might want light air or potentially no air. And then that feeds through the machine and you hook it up to the air port on the top of the laser module right there. Same thing with this guy. On the actual control side of things, um, you have a panel right here that lets you jog it around. You can do the framing function and you can start and pause the machine right there. And then on the side, you can connect to it with USB or SD card. Uh, I usually wind up using the frame function for the most part uh, because I find it is the most exact out of anything that I can do. But they also do have a camera that is right here because now they have a lid on top and they give you all the tools to be able to align that directly inside of Lightburn, which is the software that works great with this. But you can also use this with free laser software as well. But for me, Lightburn is what I wind up using the most. Now let's talk about the other big feature that Creality does an excellent job with, and that is with safety. 
Obviously starting with the enclosure itself, blocks the light, funnels all of the dust and the fumes, everything out this exhaust port right here that then you can take outside. What's good about it though, is there are sensors to where this has to be shut. I think it's probably magnetic, so it can't run unless you have this closed. And I believe it, and it's also the same with the tray itself. So the machine has to be fully enclosed before you can actually Run it. And then they have kind of the standard set of features, the uh, gyros or the motion system to where it can tell if you move the machine itself, it's gonna cut power to the laser. They also have the emergency stop right here in the front, which is great. Really quick access to if something is going super crazy wrong, that cuts like total power to the machine. So not just the laser, um, that's great in case of an emergency. And then uh, if you are like me and you have little kids running around, um, this is probably uh, the best safety feature and you need an actual key to unlock the machine turn it on and then it can run. Now the laser also has a few other safety features, including this right here, um, which is just another layer that's gonna protect the light from getting to your eyes. But you do not have this on the back side. Um, so you probably wanna be a little bit more careful when you're on the back of the machine. But from the front, that's gonna help protect your eyes even more. And then from the sides, you can't really see it because it's fully enclosed. But this right here is something super unique to Creality and that is their triple monitor system um, where it, there is an air sensor. So it can sense the air coming from your air compressor so you can make sure that it's actually running and everything is good to go. You've got a fire sensor. So if it does detect fire, it's gonna trigger that sensor and it's gonna cut power to the laser beam itself. And then there is a lens sensor, um, which I believe is down here. And that can tell if you're getting the right performance out of your actual lens. So it's not getting clogged up with dirt and debris and all that kind of stuff. So it keeps everything running smoothly. And these will light up in either red, orange, or green for a few different settings. So really quickly, you can see kind of what the performance is on the safety side for your machine. And that's something they have brought over from their 20 and 40 watt module as well. The feature that makes this unique versus that isn't what's right here, but what is right here. There are three different settings. You've got precise, normal, and powerful. And that is because this laser module can actually change the wattage inside of it. I've seen this a few different times from manufacturers, but I don't think I've ever seen one that has three different options. And so basically what they're doing is they are changing the amount of diodes that are turned on and firing for your laser. Normally like an individual laser diode is about five watts. And so they just add more and more laser diodes to get more and more power. So full power is 60 watts and that is 12 diodes they have turned on. And then if you just change it to eight diodes, you're gonna get 40 watts, which is what this guy does right here. And then finally, you can go all the way down to 22 watts and that is running four diodes. Now there's some like power loss as you step up. So that isn't like why the math works out perfectly, but it's great. You can go from power to normal to precise, depending on what you are working on. Because unlike with a CO2 machine where you can't really change the wattage easily, you'd have to change like the entire glass tube. As you turn on more and more laser diodes, you introduce more and more like internal optics, which gives you a thicker and thicker laser beam. That gives you more power, but it also means it's not gonna be as precise. So especially for engraving, you're not gonna wanna use a 60 watt machine because even though you could run it faster than something lower powered, um, the actual result, like how thick the line is, it probably isn't going to be exactly what you want. But if you want to cut 60 watts is great because you can cut faster as well as thicker. And speaking of cutting, that was the majority of the testing that I did with this machine. It's actually ran my cutting test and there's actually links for these down in the description if you guys want to download them and use them inside of Lightburn yourself. But you can see in the picture, we're going from 60 to 40 down to 22. I mislabeled that watts. And you can see kind of what the cutting performance is. Now I probably didn't have the 60 focused quite in as much because normally it's gonna be a little bit more powerful than e, which you can already see compared to the 40 watt. But then especially between the 40 and the 22, which is basically half reduction, you can see how that lines up with what I was able to cut. And then especially if you're just looking at the lines between the 60 watt and the 22 watt, you can see there is a pretty big difference, especially on the lower power side, where these are a lot thinner compared to what you're finding over here. Now, while it is super easy to interchange these modules. There are just a couple screws and there's a track on the back where the slides in and out. And then you plug in the power right over here and then the air to the top. It's even easier to change it directly on the laser itself. And so there is a button right here. You just hold down. And then as you do, you can cycle through the different modes. Now I also ran more of an engraving test. And then normally if you do a picture, uh, you're gonna have a much better idea of what the real performance is gonna be if you're doing a picture engrave, obviously. The uh, metal one I mislabeled. Uh, so 
can kind of see me scratching through. So this is 40 watts. And then especially comparing the 22 to the 60, uh, there's a pretty big difference in just the image quality because again, you're using a thicker laser beam. Now with everything, you definitely want to test out on your material before you actually cut and engrave. And then even on images, um, not only can you play around with the speed and the power, but you can also play around with the DPI or the resolution because you're going to have different size laser beams. Your DPI is going to be a little bit different. Um, so you can definitely dial it in from there. These I kept all at 200, uh, but I might've been able to increase that a little bit more on the 22 watt to get a little bit more resolution, but you can see kind of how these play out. Now, one thing they have brought over from the 40 watt unit is if you really want to do fine engraving um, inside of this box, is a 1.6 watt laser module. And I'll show an example from the previous video of this thing engraving. You're gonna get a much, much finer laser dot even compared to the 22 watt. So if you are wanting to do that, they still make it really easy. You just plug in the power right there. And then typically with engraving, you're not gonna need air assist. So there's no like air assist option even to plug in for this one. But what I like is, especially inside of light berm, I could have different layers where I know I wanted to use different wattages. So maybe I'm doing something that is just tech I can do that at 22 watts because I want it to be a little bit more fine than what I find with the 60 watt. But then to cut the whole thing out, I'm gonna crank back to the 60 watt. But the other thing that I showed you at the very beginning is as you get more wattage, that also means you can go a lot thicker. So to test that out, uh, I actually went over to hardwood. This is a little over a third of an inch thick, uh, and this is solid walnut. I did an excellent job, and not only could it cut through, but the end quality was nice as well. So you can see that I cut out 60 watts, uh, and these are really nice. And usually to tell how well the cut is, um, you can see how easily this will fit back inside. And the kerf on the beam, meaning how thick that laser was, um, isn't super huge. So this would be pretty easy if you wanted to create some type of puzzle, or if you just don't wanna go thick, you can do that. As well. Now, obviously you're not limited to hardwood. A thick acrylic is also a great option, especially with lasers. Just make sure you're using cast acrylic. That was a third of an inch, but I wanted to go even more. I wanted to go all the way up to three quarters of an inch. This is solid walnut. This is not like a walnut veneer. Um, this is some pretty thick stuff. And to do this, I would definitely want to play around with the settings because you're really trying to balance uh, the speed versus the quality of the cut. I didn't do this in a single pass. You might be able to, but you're going to have to run it super, super slow and you're going to risk getting flame ups, especially on the back side. Uh, and I, did, I haven't sanded this down and you can see I did get a little bit of char right there. And the problem with that is really on the quality side of things because you wind up burning whatever the back side of your material is is. So it's a little bit of a balancing act between power, speed, as well as the number of cuts. This one, I wound up doing four passes, but I definitely could dial it in to do less if I wanted. But the quality of the cut is really, really nice. So you can see the 60 and especially the W comes out great. Uh, and it slides back in. The kerf on it is probably a little bit thicker just because you're kind of going over the same spot multiple times. But this is something I have not been able to do um, with any of my other diode machines. And normally these manufacturers will advertise being able to cut through thick material. And it kind of feels like a party trick for the most part. It's not like super practical. Like if I want to cut a two by four, I'm just going to use a saw. Um, or specifically, if I want to do thicker wood, more than likely you might turn to something like a manual router or like a CNC router. But to do something fine like this, where we have a really small kerf, so you don't have like the size of the bit when you're cutting, this is a great option. Obviously, this isn't the first time you've had a laser that could be 60 watts. We've had CO2 machines that have gone well over 100 for a while. Now, if you want to see a comparison of 60 watts on a CO2 machine versus 60 watts on a diode machine, let me know. I have both in my shop and I can make that video in the future. But overall, I would love to know what you guys think of these more powerful machines. And do you think there's going to be an end point in terms of how much power these manufacturers can cram into a diode? All right, until next time, go make or break something in a shop. See you guys.